In honor of Women's History Month, which is March, I'll be ranking the female ducks of North America, also known as hens. The males are called drakes. Please note that my rankings are just for fun, so if you have any disagreement, please let me know in the comments. But all of my rankings, some of them might be jokes, so hope you enjoy, and maybe you'll learn a thing or two about the female ducks. And female ducks are interesting because most of them are the only parent that takes part in rearing their young. They're usually the only ones to incubate, especially the harlequin duck. The male harlequin duck just sits there. Once they mate, he just leaves, finds a stream, and the female has to do all of the taking care of the young, all the nesting, all the incubating. Very great for the females to do that. Let's start with number one, the wood duck. I'd say this is like the quintessential duck species. I mean, if not the mallard, the wood duck is a very cool looking duck, very similar to the mandarin duck. So I'm gonna give it S tier. Even the females look super cool with that shade of blue in its wing. Next up we have the female blue winged teal, which is interesting, they got that crescent shape up there, but compared to the male, there's nothing too crazy going on there. And also a thing about ducks is the females are often more camouflaged because, and birds in general, or animals in general for that matter, they're generally more camouflaged because they have to be very secretive to the nest. So that's why most of these are very brownish. Most of them might look very similar. So I'm gonna give it B tier for now. All right, this next one is a female cinnamon teal. So it's in the same genus as the blue winged teal. So I'm thinking it's not quite as cool looking, doesn't have the same facial features, so I'm going to give it C tier. Next up we have the Northern Shoveler, and this bird, even though it's a female, it still has that big shovel for a beak, and they still spin in circles with their male counterparts, so I'm going to give that S tier, just because of how cool it looks. Next up we have the Gadwall, which I think is the one of the cutest ducks, maybe Bufflehead is the real cutest duck, but... Gadwall for a dabbling duck is very cute. I'm gonna give it high A tier. Next up we have the Eurasian Wigeon. Now this bird, I put it in the North American list because they're found so frequently, especially across the eastern North Atlantic coast. So they're very similar to American Wigeons. In fact, I almost called this bird an American Wigeon. So I think they, they're kind of like American Wigeon wannabes. So I'll put them in D tier and then American in C tier. Next up we have these three doppelgangers, so this first one, the paler one, is a mallard, and that is the actual quintessential female duck, and they they do a lot, like, they represent all of these ducks, and their, their babies, their ducklings, look very yellow, very tiny, very cute. These mallards get to take care of them, so I'm going to put them just behind Gadwall, because they're not quite as cute, but they're very important, so I'll give them A tier. Next up, I think this is an American black duck. So most of them are native to North America compared to mallards, which a lot of them were domesticated and introduced. Apparently the only duck that's been truly domesticated. Black ducks are being hybridized almost to extinction by these mallards, so I'm gonna give them a tier just, just behind them because mallards are carrying a lot on their backs. Next up we have the model duck, which is similar to the Eurasian Wigeon, like an American Wigeon wannabe. So I'm going to put them in D tier. Model ducks are like found in the southern United States, I think, and maybe into South America, I'm not sure. So they look very similar to black ducks, almost like an intermediate. Don't know too much about them. Next up we have the female pintail, and this, this is a really cool duck. The male is an even fancier looking duck, and even the female has very slender body and that black bill. So I'm going to give it A tier. The very cute green winged teal. Actually I might take that back from Gadwall. This one might be the cutest dabbling duck. I'll give it A tier because of how cute she looks. Super tiny looking duck. Next up we have the canvas back. This one's a female canvas back. And 
They don't have quite as white backs as the males do, but that's okay. It's like an already written on canvas, which is cooler than the blank canvas. So I'll put it in B tier with a blue wing teal. And then we have redhead. They, they get all the love. Canvas backs look like their awkward younger brother or sister. I think they're a little overrated. I'll put them in C tier. Then we have the ringneck duck. This is one of the first ducks I ever saw. And these actually, these three and all of the rest, they dive. So they go underwater, search for fish, and come up to the surface. So I'm going to give it A tier just because of how I feel about them. And then I might move black duck down. Now we have the female, I believe that's a tufted duck. So they look, they're also Eurasian species. They don't deserve to be up there. Greater scop, I think that is, with the larger, rounder head compared to lesser scop, which is cooler. That lesser scop behaves in the fresh water, whereas greater scop tends to favor salt water, although they overlap a lot. This bird is a king eider which looks a little derpy, I must say, the facial expression. But they do a lot in the North Arctic where they breed and they come down only in the deepest of winter along the coast. I'll give it B tier. And then common eider, they're all along the North Atlantic. So they sometimes, some of them I think breed in like Boston, places like that. So I'll give it just above king eider. Harlequin duck. Now this bird is carrying a lot on her back Because the males as I said earlier do absolutely nothing all year And these birds are out in the rapids in the waterfalls in summer And then they're all along the Atlantic coast through jetties rocky jetties the toughest waves. I have to give them nest here This is the I think that's a surf scoter. Yeah, this is the surf scoter I think and this is the white wing scoter the white and its wing they don't have that much going for them, other than they dive in the ocean. Black Scoter, they look pretty cool, I must say. So, I'll put them up here. Longtail Duck. Hmm. Okay, now this is a tricky one because they look pretty cool, but... Ah, uh, let's give them A tier. Okay, Bufflehead, the cutest duck. It has to go in S tier, of course. My favorite duck, personally. Now we have common golden eye. I think I skipped Barrow's golden eye in here. Forgot to include it. But female golden eyes also have the golden eye, which is really neat. Put them in A tier. And I think there's way too many, so I'm gonna move some stuff down just to balance out everything a little bit. Okay, now we have female hooded merganser. And the males are really cool, but the females are even cooler because the hood goes over with their big brown heads and hooded mergansers along with wood duck, bufflehead, they all nest in cavities so if you live in the right location far north enough usually in like the bogs of Canada or wood ducks further in eastern North America they actually nest in nest boxes about the size of an owl box except the holes are generally horizontal instead of vertical so that they can fit their bodies into so you can actually put out a nest box for them. And common merganser as well. Red breasted, I think so too. Actually, I think both common and red breasted mergansers have been known to nest inside chimneys and falling through people's rooftops to try and find a proper nesting location. And ruddy duck, this one's also really cute. Um, let's put it in A tier. Let's put it up here. So. That is my female duck tier list for most of the ducks in North America. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please let me know if you agree or disagree with some of my rankings, and I'll catch you in the next video.